Access to Prescription Digital Therapeutics Act is going to be something that I cover, share an update on. Um, it is one of AMCP's top legislative priorities. Uh, uh, last year as well as this year. In a nutshell, the Access to Prescription Digital Therapeutics Act creates a benefit category for prescription digital therapeutics within Medicare and Medicaid. Um, this benefit category is necessary for coverage and reimbursement, which um, currently is, is, is done very piecemeal. Um, this would uh, also limit coverage and reimbursement to digital therapeutics that are reviewed and cleared by FDA um, and prescribed by a healthcare provider. Um, that is uh, kind of the main reason why AMCP is advocating for this. Um, CMS does not um, have the necessary authority to cover PDTs should they choose to do so. Um, and that creates a disparity between Medicare, Medicaid, and other government administrator, administered programs, um, as well as commercial plans. Um, the Access to PDTs Act is a, is a, is a number one top priority. Um, however, we do have um, a couple of other uh, priorities as well. Um, the I, and I am not putting this in any sort of order as to as to priority. Um, but um, our our second focus is on the Medicaid VBPs for Patients Act. Um, this is a bill that uh, was introduced in 2023. So we are um, it is it is a a newer bill for us than the PDT bill. Um, is, but what it does is it, um, the MVP Act enhances Medicaid patients' access to new high-cost therapies, cell and gene therapies, um, you know, come to mind, uh, and it, by modernizing the framework for the value-based purchasing arrangements under Medicaid. Um, it uh, would codify the multiple best price rule, which allows manufacturers to report on multiple best prices. Um, it clarifies uh, that the best price under a value-based arrangement is the maximum possible price paid. Um, and, you know, of course, it, it also has uh, certain reporting requirements uh, of manufacturers to, to CMS. Um, this is a priority of ours because, uh, you know, addressing disparities in medication use and access is a top strategic priority for AMCP as an organization. Also along those lines, um, you mentioned ECAPS, which is um, something that we are coordinating, collaborating, partnering with our fellow pharmacy associations on um, the equitable community access to pharmacist services. Um, so that is one that we are supporting as well. Um, we, um, you know, that is a, a bill that, again, was introduced in a previous uh, Congress, uh, picked up a lot of momentum in 2023, and we are, you know, hopeful that we will see um, some positive uh, movement in 2024 on that as well. Um, and then the last kind of legislative priority that I would want to um, really call out would be um, our efforts to support uh, the adoption and uptake of biosimilars. Um, and, you know, we have a couple of different ways to do so, uh, one through appropriations requests, um, another through um, supporting some of the legislation that was introduced in 2023 under the 118th um, to, you know, support that adoption and that uptake of biosimilars. Um, so I would say those would be the four top areas of focus for AMCP in 2024. AMCP has not formally taken a position on any of the bills at this time. We are monitoring, we are updating our members, we are, you know, keeping very close tabs um, on the various uh, pieces of legislation. As you mentioned, I think um, just about every uh, committee and subcommittee of jurisdiction has released some, some form of PBM legislation. And we do anticipate that there will likely be action later this year. Um, on a couple of the most uh, 
popular, or I would say the most, uh, the most, uh, the bills that have the most support. Um, so we are informing, we're educating, um, we've not taken a position. Um, we may in the future, we may not in the future, um, but we are very cognizant of um, the different conversations happening at all times um, from Capitol Hill.